Good morning. The California Oak Fire is now one of the largest fires of the year. The blaze is forcing thousands of residents to evacuate and threatens ancient sequoia trees in Yosemite. At least 17 Haitian migrants are dead after a boat capsized in the Bahamas on Sunday. Two people are in custody over the suspected human smuggling operation. A U.S. representative warns of the dangers of DNA targeting. He says DNA testing services could be used to create bioweapons that target into individuals or groups. The World Health Organization declares a global public health emergency following the recent monkeypox outbreak. It describes the outbreak as an extraordinary situation. Good morning. Welcome to NTD. I'm Kevin Hogan. Good morning, and I'm Evelyn Lee. Hope you had a great weekend. We are starting into a new week. It's the 25th of July today, and also over the weekend, President Biden was recovering from COVID. The White House physician says Biden's main symptom now is a sore throat. The president is taking Paxlovid for treatment and is not experiencing any shortness of breath. Biden tested positive for COVID on Thursday. He has been fully vaccinated with two booster shots. The White House physician says Biden's voice is a bit deep, but all his other symptoms are improving. He will continue to be treated with Tylenol, oral hydration, and an albuterol inhaler for an occasional cough. The First Lady Jill Biden tested negative for COVID on Sunday. A wildfire west of California's Yosemite National Park is turning into one of the largest fires of the year. The blaze moving through Mariposa County is forcing thousands of residents to evacuate. California Governor Gavin Newsom has issued a state of emergency for the region. Cal Fire, the fire department of the California Natural Resources Agency, says over 15,000 acres have been burned since the Oak Fire started on Friday. At least 10 structures have been destroyed and around 2,000 are being threatened. Officials say 3,000 people are under mandatory evacuation orders, around 2,000 are under fire advisory and could soon be ordered to leave. Firefighters are using tankers, air tankers, bulldozers, and hand crews to battle the fire. They have been unable to contain it. Yosemite National Park is about an hour's drive from Mariposa County. Some of the largest and oldest sequoia trees in the world risk being burned. The cause of the fire is under investigation. And two people were killed and at least five others were injured in a shooting in L.A. on Sunday. The shooting happened near a car show in Los Angeles Park. Four men and three women were taken to the hospital ranging in age from 23 to 54. Police have not identified the victims. The L.A. Police Department says the shooting occurred around 3.50 p.m. yesterday at Peck Park in the community of San Pedro. Investigators believe the shooting began as a dispute between two parties. Police have yet to identify any suspects. It is still unknown how many shooters were involved. And at least 17 Haitian migrants died off the coast of the Bahamas in a suspected human smuggling operation. A speedboat carrying them capsized yesterday. A multi-agency investigation is underway to determine the full circumstances surrounding a suspected human smuggling operation which has resulted in the deaths of these irregular Haitian migrants. It is presumed that additional persons are missing. Search and recovery continue as we speak. It is believed that their final destination was Miami, Florida. 25 people were rescued, but up to 60 people may have been on board. Authorities say two men from the Bahamas were taken into custody over the suspected human smuggling operation. Gang violence is worsening in Haiti, with its economy tumbling. Now Haitians are fleeing the country to escape gang violence and poverty. Survivors say they paid between three to $8,000 for transport. A Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee is warning Americans about the possible threat of DNA targeting. Representative Jason Crow says data collected through DNA testing services could be used to create bioweapons targeting individuals or groups.
you, you can actually take someone's DNA, take you know their their medical profile, and you can target a biological weapon that will that will kill that person or take them off the battlefield or make them inoperable. People will very rapidly spit into a cup and send it into 23andMe and get really interesting data about their background. And guess what? Their DNA is now owned by a private company and can be sold off without very with very little uh, intellectual property protection or, or privacy protection. And we don't have legal and regulatory regimes to deal with that. Crow says the expectations of privacy have degraded over the last 20 years and that polls and data show young people now have a very little expectation of privacy. He's calling for an open and public political discussion about the protection of health care and DNA information. He says adversaries will use Americans' data to develop bioweapons. 23andMe denies selling the private information and DNA data of its customers. Senator Marco Rubio has warned in the past of Chinese and Russian laboratories processing the DNA tests of Americans through Medicare and Medicaid. And in Japan, a volcano on Japan's main southern island of Kyushu erupted last night. There were no immediate reports of damage or injuries in nearby towns. The Japan Meteorological Agency announced a level 5 alert that's the highest level there is and they called for people to evacuate. Authorities said they didn't expect a large eruption. The volcano is also called Zakurajima, and it's located on the southern tip of Japan. It erupted last night with volcanic stones raining down. The rocks hit at a distance of 1.5 miles away from the crater. And this volcano is just 30 miles from the Sendai nuclear power plant. Thankfully, though, Japan's nuclear regulator says no irregularities had been detected at the power plant. Yeah, Japan has over 100 active volcanoes. According to NASA, Sakurajima is one of Japan's most active. Eruptions of varying levels take place on a regular basis. And coming up, protests start in Canada over the weekend. Find out what's motivating people to take part in demonstrations across the country. And the World Health Organization says recent monkeypox outbreak is an extraordinary situation. The WHO declared monkeypox as a global emergency that requires a coordinated global response. Find out more after the break. NTD's Capital Report. It's about getting answers. Cutting through the fog of politics. It's about your questions and our chances to ask. What is the net impact of the American Carson Graves? Thank you for joining us. We're speaking to those in power to find out what does this mean for the people. We're here so you are in the know. Navigating a world of economic madness, you need to have the right guide. What did today's decisions mean for your tomorrow? We ask why, what's the alternative? Uncover the deeper reasons and the hidden influences and highlight the real opportunities for profit. At Entity Business, we connect the dots for you. Good evening. Protests across Canada on the weekend, pedestrians and vehicle convoys took to the streets to show support for farmers in the Netherlands. And today's Jeremy Sandberg has more on the cause of the demonstrations. Protests in Canada started Saturday across the country. Many were in solidarity with the farmers in the Netherlands and other European countries. Dutch farmers are protesting against climate change policies they feel will affect their livelihood such as the government calling for a 30% reduction in livestock. In Ottawa, protesters gathered in the city's downtown and outside Parliament Hill. No farmers, no food. Vehicles formed a convoy. In Toronto, vehicles formed a larger convoy with some slow rolling to the rendezvous point. Many Canadians are concerned of policies like those in Europe coming to Canada. When the, the world stops the farmers, the people starve. Some feel that will only be a matter of time if they don't stand up now. Like we're retired and we're enjoying the farm life, but we're thinking about the children, grandchildren, future generations and for other people. A common sentiment among protesters is that government overreach is growing around the world. 
I'm sure that the farmers know what they're doing and, uh, you know, they, they, they try to do their, uh, their farming as efficiently and as effective as possible. And I don't think that they need the government to, uh, to tell them uh, exactly how to do things. Another concern is less food production and higher prices. It's going to affect the middle income and the, and the, and the lower income uh, people. So the poor people are not going to be able to eat and they're going to, you know, starve to death. Vancouver saw vehicle convoys gather in the downtown area in front of the Dutch consulate. It affects everybody, you know, like uh, you, you could be for freedom, you can be for the Liberal Party, you could be best friends with Justin Trudeau, but at the end of the day, um, if you haven't got food on, on your, in your cupboards and in your fridge, then we're all going to be in the same boat together, we're going to be starving. A large convoy of truckers gathered in Canada's capital earlier this year. Thousands joined the protests against the government's vaccine mandate for cross-border truck drivers. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau invoked the Emergencies Act to stop the protests, giving police the power to use force to clear crowds. The federal government also froze protesters and supporters' bank accounts. When they asked us to stop be beeping, we stopped beeping our horns. We were willing to move our trucks, but you know what happened? They did the emergency act us, they beat us, they beat us up, they trampled us, and that was never our intention. We just wanted freedom, we just wanted Trudeau to talk to us. If he would have talked to us, we, I'm sure we would have left. The Dutch government wants to reduce nitrogen greenhouse gas emissions and ammonia by 50% nationwide by 2030. The Canadian government is planning for a 30% reduction in emissions by 2030, possibly limiting fertilizer use. And it's a money grab, it's to grab the grab the property from the farmers who are going to be forced into either bankruptcy or selling their properties for pennies on the dollars because they're not going to have the income to uh, maintain it. The environmental regulations come at a time of global food shortages and rising fuel and fertilizer prices. Jeremy Sandberg, NTD News. Burma's military authorities have executed four democracy activists accused of helping carry out terror acts. That's according to state media. It's the country's first executions in decades. The four men were sentenced to death in a closed trial in January. They were accused of helping carry out terror acts against the army that seized power in a coup and unleashed a bloody crackdown on its opponents last year. The four included democracy figure Jimmy Jo Min Yu and former lawmaker Piu Zia Do, who was also an ally of ousted leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Both lost their appeals against their sentences in June. The two others executed were La Miu Ong and Ong Du Ya Zo. State newspaper The Global New Light of Myanmar said the punishment for the four was carried out according to prison procedure without giving details. Previous executions in Myanmar have been by hanging. The country's last judicial executions were in the late 1980s, according to a Burmese political prisoner activist group. A military spokesman did not immediately respond to calls for comment. The chief of the World Health Organization has declared the recent monkeypox outbreak a global health emergency of international concern. We have an outbreak that has spread around the world rapidly through new modes of transmission about which we understand too little and which meets the criteria in the international health regulations. For the moment, this is an outbreak that's concentrated among men who have sex with men, especially those with multiple sexual partners. That means that this is an outbreak that can be stopped with the right strategies in the right groups. The international health regulations remains a vital tool for responding to the international spread of disease. Monkeypox has spread in over 70 countries. The WHO Director General made the decision to issue the declaration despite a lack of consensus among experts serving on the UN Health Agency's Emergency Committee. A global emergency is the WHO's highest level of alert. The designation does not necessarily mean a disease is particularly transmissible or lethal. Monkeypox have been established in parts of Central and West Africa for decades. Widespread outbreaks didn't occur beyond the continent until May. The WHO previously declared emergencies for public health crises such as the COVID-19 pandemic and the 2014 West African Ebola outbreak, as well as the Zika virus in Latin America in 2016 and the ongoing effort to eradicate polio. And in some other news, truck drivers and Britons that head off on holiday by ferry faced hours-long waits at the port of Dover on Saturday. 
Dover authorities blame a lack of French border officials at the English Channel port. The wait can take up to six hours for border checks. It's also the start of the summer school holidays there, which means millions of Britons are starting vacations this weekend. Queues of tourists and freight traffic snarled roads for miles, but they're also facing delays by sea, rail and air. This has especially become an issue since Britain left the European Union in 2020. Now UK travelers face stricter border checks when traveling to Europe. France denies its border officials were unprepared for the influx. The aviation industry is showing signs of recovery. Delta Airlines signed an order for 100 new Boeing jetliners. The deal was announced last week at Farnborough International Air Show in the UK. Boeing used the event to show off its latest aircraft, including the 777X. Entity's Cost Temines has more. The Farnborough International Air Show kicked off despite the UK's first ever extreme heat warning being in effect. Boeing's latest aircraft, the 777X, is billed as the world's largest and most efficient twin-engine jet. But it's still in its test stages. Paul Mayer has flown the aircraft and says it will be an easy upgrade for pilots who have flown earlier variants of the 777. The 777X promises to deliver 10% less fuel use and emissions. The industry is working to uh, bring into scale uh, sustainable aviation fuels, which will tremendously lower the emissions of the aviation industry. And then beyond that, it's future technology. So what other zero emission technologies can we build? Alternative fuels, hydrogen power, other electrification. But it was Boeing's other new aircraft that are grabbing headlines. Airline Delta signed a deal to buy 100 of the 737 MAX 10s. Still in its testing phase, around 2,000 sensors placed across the aircraft monitor its performance. It still has to be approved by U.S. authorities to fly. Deliveries to Delta are expected to start in 2025. Cost MNS, NTD News. And up next, European bison were once on the brink of extinction. Now the endangered species is being reintroduced to the UK wilderness. And a couple receives some shocking news in the delivery room. Now they have a powerful message about their child. Find out more after the break. This is Lee Smith from Over the Target. I'm here to announce a brand new show available only on Epoch TV, and that's Over the Target Live, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. For an hour each Thursday, starting at 9, we'll be speaking with guests live, and I'll be taking questions from you live as well, touching on all the themes, topics, subjects, and issues that Over the Target is known for, from foreign policy and national security to this, our great American life. I'll look forward to seeing you soon, and I'll look forward to hearing from you soon, too. Thursday nights at 9 for Over the Target Live. I'm Lee Smith. Thanks. Children love to surprise their parents, no matter how young they are. This couple from Aurora, Illinois, caught their surprise on camera in the delivery room. What? Baby Micah gave his parents Katie and Abe Martinez a big surprise at birth. So there's a lot of um, side conversations, there's a lot of medical professionals and we kind of didn't know whose role was what. Um, and then Abe, I think, asked one of the nurses, he, he was like, hey, does he look like he has Down syndrome? <laughs> Katie shared their reaction to the moment they found out in order to raise awareness about Down syndrome and let people know it's okay. The video went viral. I had already grown um, to know him and because um, he was inside my belly. So I think my feeling was just the overwhelming excitement of being a mom and welcoming Micah. And that kind of overshadowed any fear or doubt. After the initial shock, the first time parents were thrilled to meet their new baby. It was a surprise and it was just kind of like a second of like, oh my goodness, what? And then. <laughs> I think initially it was shock and denial. I was when they placed it on my chest, he was just yeah. quiet and so sweet. Nothing was detected in the ultrasounds during the pregnancy. The couple <laughs> says they prefer it this way. The medical community is like their first response is to offer abortion. 
and that's really upsetting and I think it's really backwards. Yeah, you know, Down syndrome and any other diagnosis could be, you know, uh, could be scary because uh, many people may not know what it may look like years down the road and everybody has their own story. But uh, we just wanted to just share our story and let people know that like it's it, it's it's OK and that it's going to be OK. And Hi. Honestly, he surpassed all of our expectations. <laughs> my main message is to just show the quality of life that Micah has. Um, and he's happy, he's thriving, he's doing great. Um, so really, other people don't really understand how amazing that they are. Micah is now a social, energetic two and a half year old with a soft spot for his younger sister. Micah, I wouldn't change you for the world, but for you, I will change the world. You know, Evelyn, that's really sweet. I wonder what great things that kid's gonna grow up to do. I know, it must be hard to be a good, to be good parents, but I think it's brave how they took the news and just shared it with the world. And in other news, a rewilding program is bringing European bison back into the highlands of Scotland. The program is using the enormous beast's natural talent to improve biodiversity in the woodlands. Entity's Flinders Kingsley has that story. Three European bison have been released back into the UK woodlands. After some time, the rewilding program will introduce these females to a bull to repopulate the area. And then when we released them today, she did exactly what she should have done, which is she went out first, made sure it was safe for them, indicated to them, and they followed her out and then posed for a bit for the cameras and then just headed out into the baleen with them. Wild pigs and ponies may also be introduced to increase biodiversity later. However, the one-ton European bison will remain the largest. So European bison are generally referred to as, as mega herbivores. They're the biggest land animal of Europe. And because of their size and because of their behaviors, they have an enormous impact on their environment. They're ecological engineers, really. The bison's grazing clears the land. Walking through the woods, they remove the dead wood off the trees. Just by living, the bison creates diverse habitats for wildlife to blossom. Jobs that men and machines would otherwise be doing, making the bison a precious resource. 1927, the last European bison in the world was, was killed in the wild. And um, that's absolutely tragic, but there were 50 of those animals who remained in zoological collections, which then led to a, a very extensive and intensive breeding effort, um, which has got us to the point we're at today with, with over 8,500 European bison in the world. The bison currently have over 120 acres, but as the program continues to grow, the bison will be given more room to roam. This is Flinders Kingsley, NTD News. Boatgoers in Plymouth, Massachusetts didn't exactly have a whale of a time on Sunday. One of their small boats near the beach was whaled on, literally. According to the town of Plymouth's Facebook page, a whale breached and landed on the bow of a small boat. Remarkably, the 19-foot boat suffered no major damages. No injuries were reported, but Massachusetts Environmental Police are conducting an investigation. In the meantime, boats are advised to stay 100 yards away from whales to minimize potential interactions. Wow. Imagine telling that story at home. Yeah, yeah, no it's something to tell the grandkids, that. right? Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, I actually saw some whales when I was whale watching up in Maine. You did? Yeah, the fin came out and everything. It was really cool. Wow, it's still on my to-do list. <laughs> yeah. That's all for today's program. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. I'm Evelyn Lee. And I'm Kevin Hogan. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Did you know YouTube only keeps selective videos on its platform? So if you want to make sure you get the full picture, just subscribe to our newsletter. Go to newsletter.ntd.com and sign up. It's free.